Joining me now is the former Democratic Senator Doug Jones of Alabama. He's also a former United States Attorney for the Northern District of Alabama and the author of the book Bending Toward Justice. Ruth Ben Giat is a professor of history at NYU, the author of the Lucid uh, newsletter Following Threats to Democracy, and the uh, author of the book Strong Men, Mussolini to the Present. Good morning to both of you. Um, Ruth, you, you had a very quick response uh, on social media to the to the debate and a reminder that some of us forget and that is that the dis the ensuing discussion about the debate plays very well into Donald Trump's hands uh, and, and and what you call the authoritarian playbook tell me more about what you meant so this wasn't a debate um, in the sense that a debate is when uh, two candidates show up to educate the people about with accurate information about their uh, agendas so that voters can make a choice. Donald Trump showed up to uh, spew propaganda, turn this into a propaganda show, and uh, that was his information warfare uh, agenda all along. And the problem is, because there was no live fact-checking, which was a grievous error on the part of CNN, whoever was there, it could be you could substitute Biden for somebody you like better. That person would have been forced into a defensive position, uh, refuting all of the lies, because this was a fire hose of falsehood, as we say in propaganda studies, from coming from Trump. And thus ha would have had to spend mm -hmm. his time in defensive position rather than arguing about his case to the American people and focusing on his achievements. So the whole framing of the, of the quote, debate, uh, is wrong, and it doesn't, we can't have, this is like the old forms of election politics are continuing, but when you have an authoritarian in the mix, they don't work anymore. Senator, you know from experience what it's like to run against a volatile, intellectually dishonest, populist candidate. Let's talk about how you and I, I take uh, Root's point, but for, for the moment, until we have a better word, uh, we'll refer to it as, as the debate. How difficult it is to go up against an unrestrained candidate who constantly lies? Because that's right. I think it's a moderator's job to uh, to try and keep honesty in the debate. But that's very difficult when you run against somebody like Donald Trump. Yeah, it's almost impossible because they are uh, dominating and controlling. And when you are uh, against an opponent who is completely untethered to the truth, then they can say and do anything and can really be bullying and dominating. And I think about the only thing you could do is just simply look over there and say, that's a damn lie. That is a lie once again. Let me tell you about the Biden administration or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, Allie, and I think you said it in your opening monologue very, very well. The presidency is about much more than a single debate. It is about much more than simply a two-minute answer uh, on a debate stage or a one-minute response. It's about judgment. It's about character. It's about deliberation. It's about putting a team, as you noted, an administration together that people have confidence in and not a bunch of wackos like we have seen in the past with Donald Trump and more likely to see, be, see again. That's what this is uh, about. And I think going forward, people are going to see that. Yeah, you're going to see um, uh, Joe Biden's debate performance over and over again. Uh, but I think as we go forward, you're going to see a lot coming out about what Donald Trump actually said and did. And it is somewhat frightening for the American people when the Republican Party, unlike Democrats, who are openly talking about the fact that Biden had a bad night. That's the way democracy works. On the other hand, as you noted, you've got a Republican Party who is falling in line behind their dear leader, who will not question the 34 felony counts, will not question his millions of dollars in fraud judgments, which means misleading the public uh, in fraud. Nobody is questioning that. And I think as we go forward, that is going to become crystal clear to the American people. And that is an interesting point, Ruth, because what you have amongst Democrats in the last uh, two days, I have to admit, because uh, I don't know, I don't know what the future should look like. Is is a debate by members of a party who are part of a big tent, some of whom think Joe Biden should go, he should step aside, he should be replaced by someone else, some of whom think he should stay. 
all of which tells me that the Democrats are not a cult at the moment. They're a bunch of different people with, with differing views who, at the moment, uh, would like the preservation of democracy and, and they would like that form to be in the defeat of Donald Trump. Republicans are in a different place. What Trump says is right and, and is not to be questioned. Yeah, one of the reasons that far-right messaging is so effective is that they have unified messaging. And Trump, ever since his first uh, impeachment, uh, has, you know, put the vice on the party so that people who not just, is not just voting, uh, you know, in ways he doesn't like, it's even saying anything. Remember when Senator Ted Cruz was hauled uh, on um, Tucker Carlson's show a long time ago because he made the mistake of calling January 6th a terrorist operation, and he was publicly humiliated. And you could see the fear in his eyes because he's a senator, but he had no power in that moment because he had violated the uh, unified propaganda talking points. And so that's the advantage that they have had. Now, you could say that the Democrats uh, having this public questioning is a sign of health. Uh, in the party. The only thing is, you know, I, I'm just very skeptical because the way from where I sit, I study uh, authoritarians who are superb performers. They're professional liars. And what we saw was mm -hmm. somebody who lied with great vigor and great energy. And so he's being uh, proclaimed the winner of the debate. And that's not a sign of a, of a healthy democracy. That's a sign of a of a, a, a you know environment where uh, the the kind of sensationalist uh, you know values have taken hold over the meaning of politics. So the form and the style matters. The content no ma no longer matters. So Biden telling the truth in a in a feeble way made him the loser. Trump telling lies uh, in a vigorous way made him the winner. That's that's not right. And, and let's see how this all pans out. We only have one poll right now. It was a morning consult poll that was released uh, after the, the race. Although, I, you know, I think if I were polled right now, I would say to somebody, I need a few days to digest, to read, to think. We need to see what, you know, we, we saw what Joe Biden had to say, Senator, on Friday uh, in response, in which he, he said, I'm not, the, I'm not the man I used to be in a lot of ways. But the, the morning consult poll was interesting in that it shows the race largely unchanged by the debate. 45% of registered registered voters say they support Joe Biden, 44 percent say they support Trump, which is within the margin of error, the caveat that, that uh, th th there's normally limitations to polling that take place sort of right after an event. What do you think the right answer is? The, the p Democrats and people who don't want Donald Trump to be the president would just like to know what the road forward looks like, and I think they'd like to know that someone's thinking about it, probably Joe Biden and those around him. What's your sense of what the future should look like? Should Joe Biden be staying in this race, or should there be some consideration by Joe Biden about it, a, a, a different option? You know, look, Ali, I, I know this. I've known Joe Biden for 45 years now, plus. Uh, and I know that they have uh, looked at the game films. I know that they have discussed the performance the other night. But I also know this. Uh, at his core, and everybody in the world that has ever watched Joe Biden knows this, that at his core, Joe Biden makes decisions not based on personal uh, uh, gain the way that Donald Trump does. He makes decisions based on what he believes to be in the best interest of the, of the country. And that's what he's going to do. And the path forward is to continue to show the American people what you have done, your deliberation, your experience, your team, your judgment. Those are the kind of things that are going to be a, a very, very uh, important. And, you know, I think it's also important to remember, and the, the morning consult poll was very important, I think, because it was a snapshot immediately after the debate. What you, I'm likely to see now is because of the media coverage, as opposed to the actual debate itself, the media coverage, it maybe cause a little slip in those polls. Um, but I think that can be overcome very easily. One of the things, remember this. Remember the Access Hollywood tape? Remember the calls among Republicans for Donald Trump to drop out of the race? Yeah. Well, those kind of things are gone now. January 6th, Republicans thought that they had rid their party of Donald Trump. That lasted about 48 hours. And so this is, is a healthy debate. And at the same time, what's going to happen? They're going to make a decision in the best interest of the country. We're going to go forward on the issues that have made this a very successful presidency and will continue to make it a successful presidency in the four years to come. 
Thank you to both of you. I appreciate uh, this analysis. This is a remarkably important issue, and your input is really valuable to those out there who are trying to process this. Doug Jones is a former United States senator from Alabama. He's a former United States attorney and the author of the book Bending Toward Justice. Ruth ben Giat is a professor of history at New York University and the author of the Lucid Newsletter and the book Strongmen from Mussolini to the Present. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.